we're going to take a look at the IUPAC nomenclature of aldehydes and it's really based off of what you've previously learned for naming um, other acyclic compounds and the basics are as follows. We'll identify the parent chain which is the longest carbon chain that contains the aldehyde carbon. Then we'll number that parent chain setting the aldehyde carbon to number one. I will change the parent ending if it was an alkane, we have the E ending. We'll change that to AL to designate the aldehyde functional group. We'll identify number and name our substituents. And then we'll assemble the name by alph alphabetizing the substituents and following it by the parent. The best way to do this is through an example. So our first goal here is to identify the parent chain. One of the most common mistakes that people make is to see this horizontal chain in the compound and say well that has to be my parent. The problem is if you do that your aldehyde carbon isn't part of the parent so that doesn't work. What we need to do is make sure this aldehyde carbon is part of the parent chain. In that case our longest carbon chain that contains the aldehyde carbon is this. From here we need to number our carbon chain and for our numbering we set the aldehyde carbon to number one and then we'll just number out our chain. So we end up with a six carbon parent. The next thing we need to do is come up with the actual parent name and six carbons is hexane. But what we're going to do here is we're going to drop this E from the alkane name and change that to AL. So that'll be hexanal. In this case, we don't need to specify one hexanal because since aldehydes are always terminal, they'll always be carbon-1. Our next goal is to identify, number, and name our substituents. So we'll just work um, in increasing number. Our first substituent is on carbon-2, and it's a propyl group. So there we have our 2-propyl. Carbon-3, we have a hydroxy. And what we see here is that the aldehyde, being a more oxidized carbon, took precedence for the parent name, and that's why we're not naming this as an alcohol. So we'll just make this a hydroxy substituent. And then we have two bromines on carbon-5. There's our five bromos. Okay, now we need to assemble our name. And we start by putting our substituents alphabetically. So we're comparing B, H, and P. B comes first alphabetically. We have two bromos, so let's make this 5 comma 5 dibromo. Next comes the H, so we'll do our 3-hydroxy. Next is 2-propyl. And then finally, we finish the name up with the parent, which is hexanal. And that's how we name this particular aldehyde. Now what if we actually have stereochemistry designated because this alcohol is in fact um, a chiral center as is this propyl group. Well, the propyl group we didn't designate um, any configuration there, 
so we don't have to worry about specifying that one. But the alcohol, we did designate stereochemistry, so we need to specify in our name its configuration. So based on the Kahn and Gold Prelog rules um, for prioritization, let's go ahead and um, draw in our hydrogen. And that's back. Well, hydrogen's our priority four group. Oxygen, priority one. We have this carbon versus this carbon. Well, this carbon has two carbons attached. We'll make that two. And this carbon that has one carbon attached, we'll make that three. Okay, so with our priority four group pointed back, draw our arrow one to two, two to three. We're going around to the right. So that's our configuration. If we number our carbon chain, that's carbon three. Since there is more than one chiral center, we need to designate three R in front of the name. We'll just put that in parentheses. And that way we can tell the reader what the configuration is at carbon three and that it's specified. Had we shown the configuration at carbon two, we could have put that as part of the name as well. Let's look at one more example for an acyclic aldehyde, and we'll go through the same basic rules. First step, we'll identify our parent chain and our longest carbon chain containing the aldehyde is this. The next thing we need to do is number our parent chain and we'll make the aldehyde carbon 1. We number out the 7, so it's a 7 carbon parent. From here we need to change our parent ending. We're going to do this a little differently because we have to deal with this alkene. So if there wasn't an aldehyde, we would name this as heptene. So really, it's going to be the same type of thing as we did before. Rather than using the alkane to start with, we'll use this alkene name, but we're just going to drop the E, change it to AL. So that'll be heptinal. We also need to specify where exactly that carbon-carbon double bond is, and it's between carbons 5 and 6, so we're going to say 5 heptinal. We don't need to specify where the aldehyde's at because we know that's at carbon 1. We need to identify, number, and name our substituents. In this case, we only have one substituent, and that is a methyl group on carbon 6. And now all that's left to do is assemble our name. We have 6-methyl, 5-heptinal. And that's how we deal with alkenes in our compound. One other case that you might run into is having an aldehyde attached to the ring. If an aldehyde is attached to the ring, we do it a little bit differently. Um, we're going to follow basic IUPAC rules of making the ring, our parent numbering around this ring, we're going to pick the carbon that has the aldehyde attached as carbon 1. So in this case, the aldehyde carbon isn't part of the parent chain. And we'll name this ring um, as we would just a cyclic alkane. And we'll follow up the name with carbaldehyde.
to represent we have this carbaldehyde group attached. Okay, so let's go through this step by step. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is pick our carbon containing the aldehyde on the ring as carbon 1. Next thing we need to do is number around the ring in the direction that gives us the lowest substituent numbering. Okay, and that's going to be counterclockwise. Okay, now just for comparison, let's go ahead and number it the other way. If we numbered it, making that one, we would have a substituent at 3, 5, and 5, which is a total of 13, versus 3, 3, and 5, which gives us a total of 11, which is better. So that's why we use this numbering scheme. If these numbers ended up being the same and there was a tie, then you would switch to alphabetical priority. Okay, so now that we have our ring numbered, we can um, generate our basic alkane, cyclic alkane name, and follow it with carbaldehyde. So we have here, let's just go ahead and simplify this, and we'll say 3,3-diethyl. but we'll use the E for alphabetical purposes, and 5-chloro. Okay, so now to assemble our name, we have 5-chloro-3,3-diethyl. And really, we're going to treat our parent as just cyclohexane. Okay, it's not cyclohexanal because the aldehyde carbon isn't part of the parent. The aldehyde carbon is coming off the parent. But to tell the reader that we have this aldehyde attached, now we just finish our name uh, with carbaldehyde. This would be the IUPAC name for this compound.